Earlier this year, I reviewed the HP Spectre X360 15. That's that 15 inch convertible that was running Intel's 10th generation processor. It was running the Core i7-10750H, a 45 watt CPU paired with the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti with Max-Q. Now, it did really well in terms of performance with that combination between CPU and GPU, but something very interesting happened in the latter part of 2020. Intel released their 11th gen Tiger Lake processors, and with that comes the Intel Iris Xe graphics, a definite performance boost over last year's Iris Plus graphics. This is normally reserved for the 13-inch 2-in-1 that HP offers in their Spectre line. HP now offers the Spectre X360 15 with that Intel 11th Gen Tiger Lake processor with the XE graphics, uh, an interesting combination. The question remains, of course, should you buy the one with the dedicated GPU, with the NVIDIA GPU, or should you get this one if you don't need all that pizzazz? Because the XE graphics have been really good. Uh, we're gonna find out today. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the HP Spectre X360 15, running Intel's 11th Gen Tiger Lake processor with integrated XE graphics. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell. This way you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video and make sure you follow me on my social media, especially Twitter and Instagram. It's on those platforms I post updates. And why not check out our new Ravamp Discord server? It's a great place for us to hang out and talk tech. Link will be in the description below. And today's video is brought to you by all the members who contributed this month to the channel. If you want to become a member, hit that join button below. And of course, in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is seeing this video before its release. This unit, it was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from HP. Now, pricing as of January 3rd, 2021 is $1199.99. If you want to get the unit that I'm reviewing today as configured, you're going to pay $1519.99. And of course, if you want the H series with the more beefy processor, the dedicated NVIDIA GPU, that is a starting price right now of $1399.99. And if you want to get the one I reviewed a few months back as configured like that, $1569.99. I'll put the link below for more information and where you can buy it. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now, inside the box, of course, is that premium packaging, which houses the unit itself. Uh, opening that box up, you're greeted by the laptop. And once again, feels premium, high-end. We'll get to that in just a little bit. You get some warranty information and a setup guide. You get a 135 watt barrel pin connector, power adapter, along with the extension cord. HP also includes the pen, we'll get into that in a little bit, as well as a really nice faux leather carrying sleeve, once again a nice touch from HP. Now holding the unit for the first time, very premium, very high end, not the lightest 15 inch convertible, but definitely portable enough to take with you on the go. Now this is the Nightfall Black with the Copper Lux accents, but for $10 more, you could also get it in Poseidon Blue with the Pale Brass accents. And here it is next to the Dell XPS 15 9500. And as you can see, similar footprint between the two. But of course, one of the key differences between the two, the Spectre X360 is a convertible design, whereas the Dell XPS 15 is a clamshell. And another key difference between the two is that the Spectre X360 has a 16 to 9 OLED option, whereas the Dell XPS 15 comes in an IPS display with a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. And here it is next to the X360 14 that I recently reviewed. And of course, as you can see, the 14 has a smaller footprint as expected. And another key difference between the two, the 16 to 9 aspect ratio of the 15 versus the 3 to 2 aspect ratio of the 14. It's just a matter of personal preference as to which one is better. Now, as far as the keyboard itself is concerned, nothing has really changed from the version that I looked at earlier this year with the dedicated GPU. You get the numeric keypad, so some people are going to like that, some people may not like that, as it moves everything over in terms of the keyboard to the left, a little bit off-center. But for those number crunchers, accountants, and people who use spreadsheets are going to really like having the numpad. Now, as far as the fingerprint scanner, it's located right below the keyboard itself on the deck. And, of course, you have the power button in the corner with that gem cut design. 
Now, as far as the keyboard itself, good tactile feedback, good key travel, multi-stage backlight means you can work in dark rooms, dimly lit environments without any issues. It lit up really nicely and it gets the job done. And once again, there's a dedicated key for the HP command center, and that allows you to change the thermal profile on the fly. I really like that. And once again, we get a glass touchpad that uses precision drivers, very responsive, two finger scrolling, buttery smooth, and all the Windows 10 gestures worked as advertised. They did a good job once again. And of course, as we always do, let's check out the port selection. We'll start off on the left side where in the gem cut corner, you get your power button. Next to that is your power port, an HDMI port, a heat vent, and then your 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving over to the right side is your micro SD card slot for storage expansion, a heat vent, the kill switch for the webcam, a USB-A port, one of your two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and in that corner is your second Thunderbolt 4. They both support data charge and display out. And of course, one of the best parts of the laptop is its display. It's absolutely gorgeous. I have the AMOLED option, but of course you could also get it with the IPS. Now what we're looking at here is a 4K UHD resolution that's 3840 by 2160. It's a very bright display coming in at 420 nits. It also has the extreme deep blacks, the very vibrant colors, which are the hallmarks of an OLED display. It also has really excellent contrast and it has pretty good color accuracy and it really covers the color gamut extremely well, 100% sRGB, 99% Adobe RGB, 94% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut, and 94% NTSC, making this an excellent choice for content creators who do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. And even though this is a glossy display, I didn't have any issues in terms of glare or reflections. They used a pretty good coating on it. And as far as the display is concerned, when you compare it to the 8 series processor with the same 4K AMOLED display I reviewed a few months back, pretty much the same in terms of the metrics, pretty much the same in terms of the overall experience. Now these of course have the same exterior, all the changes you're gonna notice of course are gonna be under the hood. So this is the front facing camera on the HP Spectre X360 15T running the Intel 11th gen Tiger Lake processor with Intel Iris Xe graphics. Uh, 720p, 30 frames per second. Webcam, there is a kill switch, a physical kill switch on the laptop, as I showed you in the ports. Uh, good for Zoom, good for Skype. I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. And this being a two-in-one convertible means you can put it into the different modes, giving it a lot of versatility. Here you see tent mode. You also see stand mode. Both are great for consuming media. Both are great for recipes in the kitchen. And of course, you could always put it into the tablet mode. Great for use with the pen. Now, as far as the pen itself is concerned, we're looking at 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. Uses the Microsoft Pen Protocol 2.0 or MPP 2.0, which is based on the Ntrig standard, same as the Surface Pen. And it's good for taking notes sketching out artwork and i love the fact that it charges via usb-c so no hunting for any quadruple a batteries nice and as far as user upgradeability is concerned i had a bit of a problem opening this up one of the screws just wouldn't cooperate but if it's any indication like the 8 series that we looked at a few months back the user will only be able to upgrade the ssd although you get some excellent reads and writes with my one gigabyte mvme ssd drive as you see here the ram unfortunately is soldered into the motherboard you won't be able to upgrade that so 16 gigabytes will be the maximum and as far as wireless is concerned we're looking at wi-fi 6 with a bluetooth 5 combo Every Everything worked well in terms of range and reception. All right, let's talk about performance. And what this is running is Intel's 11th gen Tiger Lake processor. It's the Core i7 1165G7 paired with the integrated graphics, which are known as the Intel Iris Xe graphics. We've seen it before on the 14 inch. We've seen it before in other brands as well. Really good performance boost in terms of graphics over last year's Intel Iris Plus graphics, but not quite as good, of course, as a dedicated GPU as we saw with the 8 series running that GTX 1650 Ti Max Q. As you can see, you get a little bit more horsepower when it comes to graphics performance. So if you're doing things such as 4K video editing, high-end graphics work, definitely go with the dedicated NVIDIA GPU option. If you're going to do basic tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, consuming media, XE graphics did perfectly fine. And when it comes to gaming, you can definitely game with the XE, definitely with 1080p, low settings, you'll get playable frame rates. And they found that the thermals were better than the 14-inch because of its bigger size. Now, when it comes to the thermals, when I ran my stress test with the Prime 95, 
It would start off with a CPU clock speed of 4.6 gigahertz, 95 degree core temperature. It maintained that core temperature under heavy load, dropped down to around anywhere from 3 gigahertz to 3.6 gigahertz, maintaining 95 degrees Celsius. And although it stayed pretty warm, it didn't thermal throttle too much, which is pretty good. Now you will notice the fans will kick in to try to keep it cool and you will notice them, although not too loud, not too annoying. And as far as battery life is concerned, this is a six cell 72.9 watt hour battery and it did seven hours and 45 minutes on my continuous web surfing test, which is a little bit better than the Spectre X360 we looked at a few months back with the dedicated GPU and that eight series six core processor. And if you do need to plug in, they do supply you with the 135 watt power adapter with the barrel pin connector, and it takes less than two hours for a full charge, and it also charges via USB-C. So for those that are wondering, you have that option. Now, sound is really good on this version of the Spectre X360. It has quad speakers, meaning there's four, and they're banging Olufsen tuned in terms of the sound. Good mids, good volume, decent bass, and fills up a room pretty nicely. They did a great job when it comes to the audio. Okay, let's bring it all home. Can I recommend the HP Spectre X360 15T running the 11th Gen Tiger Lake processor with the integrated XE graphics here for early 2021? And the answer is yes, I can recommend it. But keep in mind, if you need extra horsepower to do things like 4K video editing, higher end video game playing and so forth, go with the 8 series processor. It's a 45 watt CPU with a dedicated NVIDIA GPU. You'll get a little bit more horsepower out of it. Again, a little bit more expensive but if you want to save a few bucks this is a good version to get especially because you're getting pretty much all the benefits in terms of the exterior the display and everything else we've talked about with slightly better battery life and that's why i'm going to recommend the hp spectre x360 15t with the tiger lake processor here for 2021 as we start 2021 and it still retains my editor's choice for this category What do you think about the Spectre X360 15? I like it with the Intel 11th Gen processor, the Tiger Lake XE graphics. Uh, the question remains, of course, should you get this or should you get the one with the H series processor? It's a 45 watt processor with six cores with the NVIDIA GPU, the 1650 Ti. And the question remains is, which one should you get? And it all depends on what you're looking for. This is a good value. If you like to have just simple tasks, you don't need to do high-end video editing. You can still game on this, of course. 1080p low settings with the Intel Iris XE graphics. Uh, definitely worth it. It's not the thinnest or lightest uh, two-in-one. It definitely has a little bit of half. I showed you the weight and the dimensions, but definitely something to look at. Beautiful OLED display we've be seen before, 4K resolution, 3840 by 2160. Of course, that's a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. I've been getting a lot of questions in the comments. When are they going to move to a 3 to 2 aspect ratio like they did with the 14-inch variant we just reviewed? And that's a good question. We might see it later on. The question remains, though, is there any supply chain for a 3 to 2 OLED display? I'm not aware of it. Maybe they're out there. Maybe they're going to be coming. Uh, that might be the biggest uh, hold, hold up on that as far as seeing a 3 to 2 OLED display on this. Uh, really nice overall, especially when you're getting this with the 11th gen Tiger Lake with the XE graphics. Definitely gets the job done. It just, the question remains, do you need to get this or do you want to wait for 11th gen refresh of the H series processor to get a little bit more oomph? Or if you needed that dedicated GPU from NVIDIA, the 1650 Ti. So that's going to be the question that everybody has to answer for themselves. Again, I can't answer it for you because I'm a really big fan of the 11th gen Tiger Lake processor. XE graphics are a definite improvement over Iris Plus graphics. It's just not going to rise to the level of something like the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.